Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about the comparison between CMOS and bipolar technologies. So CMOS and bipolar technologies, these are two important technologies. One is used for low power applications like CMOS and another one is used for fast applications say BJT. There are some uh, remarkable differences between these two technologies. We should uh, definitely, one should definitely know to go for the fabrication of bipolar and CMOS technologies. So I will give you a few points related to CMOS technology and thereby bipolar technology so that we can compare these two technologies one by one. So first one is CMOS technology. If you take the CMOS technology, what are the important features of CMOS technology we are going to discuss now. So in the CMOS technology, the power dissipation is very low, very low. So we can say low static power dissipation, low static power dissipation. And as the MOS technology is having high input impedance, the same will be carried with the CMOS technology. That means it is having very high input impedance. High input impedance. High input impedance. And then another important feature is scalable threshold voltage. Scalable threshold voltage. What do you mean by scalable threshold voltage? What do you mean by scalable threshold voltage? The threshold voltage is nothing but Vt. What is the Vt? What is Vt? Vt is nothing but it is the threshold voltage or we can say minimum voltage required to switch on the transistor. That means we have the ability or feasibility to change the threshold voltage. Okay, that means we can change adjust the threshold voltage also. But if you go to the CMOS bipolar technology, once the transistor is designed, we cannot design the cut-in potential okay once the transistor is fabricated that is uh, by uh, normal bjt is fabricated that is designed for one particular cut-in voltage like 0.3 or 0.2 for germanium and 0.7 or 0.8 for the silicon okay we cannot change beyond this two points but if you go to these threshold voltage of the uh, cmos technology we have a feasibility to change the threshold voltage by the body bias effect. The change of threshold voltage is known as body bias effect where the uh, biasing potential is required to change the threshold voltage. That is the main advantage of the CMOS technology. Another one is high noise margin. So high noise margin. high noise margin and high packing density within small area we can accommodate more number of transistors high packing density high packing density and high delay sensitivity to load high delay sensitivity to high delay sensitivity to load that means it is having some limitation with respect to fan out and low output drive current low output drive current and low gm low GM. GM is nothing but transconductance. GM is nothing but transconductance. GM is proportional to here Vn. GM is proportional to Vn. So definitely it is very less value. Bidirectional capability. It is having CMOS is having bidirectional capability that means if you take a mass transistor where the source and drain are interchangeable source and drain are interchangeable but if you go to the bipolar technology there the p terminal and n terminal 
are fixed okay that means collector and emitter terminals you cannot interchange but here in the mass technology we can interchange the drain and source terminals so that is the reason why it is having bidirectional capability a near ideal switching device ideal switching device ideal switching device now all these are related to the cmos technology now let us see what are the points related to bipolar technology bipolar technology so the first one is high power dissipation the drawback of the bipolar technology is this one high power dissipation but whereas in the cmos technology we are having very low power dissipation that we can say as the advantage there but here the drawback in the bipolar technology is high power dissipation low input impedance low input impedance low voltage swing logic low voltage low voltage swing logic that means if you are taking the uh, logic levels like uh, 0 to plus 5 volts we cannot get the 100 percent accurate results in the output the swing logic is low that means it will reach up to 4 and in the bottom part it may go up to 1 so that means the voltage swing is low value and a low lead sensitivity to load low delay sensitivity to load low delay sensitivity to load and next high output drive current high output drive current high output drive current high transconductance gm it is high value where gm is proportional to e power vn whereas in the previous case the gm is proportional to vn okay so next high ft at low currents essentially an unidirectional essentially unidirectional essentially unidirectional okay these are the important for points that we have to discuss about the CMOS and bipolar technology. So most outline we can we can say CMOS technology is a very low power consuming device. But whereas in the bipolar technology that is very uh, high power consuming technology. And one more is high input impedance in the case of CMOS technology and a very low input impedance in case of the bipolar technology. Uh, the transconductance GM is low in CMOS technology, but whereas in the bipolar technology, the GM is essentially high. Okay, so all these are the different uh, key points that we should remember when you are going for the fabrication of uh, transistors with the both the technologies by CMOS or CMOS technology. That means we should know which is the best uh, power consuming uh, technologies and as well as very low voltage um, applications low voltage applications like up to 5 volts it should operate or 3 volts it should operate in such a way we should choose the circuit diagrams so that may be the help of uh, transistors or it may be well the help of uh, circuit uh, CMOS uh, devices okay and uh, another important point which we have discussed here is 
Bidirectional capability. In the case of uh, CMOS technology, source and drain are interchangeable. That's why it is having bidirectional capability. But whereas in the bipolar technology, that is fixed forever. Once the P and P structures are created, the emitter collector and base will not vary. So that is fixed. So all these are the different advantages and disadvantages of the two technologies. Thank you.